Here we're going to look at a nice and quick number theory problem. So our goal is to find an example of a natural number, which we'll call n, satisfying the following three conditions. So n over 2 is a perfect square, n over 3 is a perfect cube, and then n over 5 is a perfect fifth power. So I think you could pretty easily describe a whole family of numbers that satisfy this, but we're gonna find the smallest. We won't carefully prove that it's the smallest, but I think it's pretty clearly the smallest. So keeping in mind that we're dividing by two, three, and five, we know that n needs to have two, three, and five as its prime factors, or as some of its prime factors. So let's maybe go ahead and write n as two to the a times three to the b times five to the c. Now we could multiply by more prime factors, but all of those prime factors would have to be squared, cubed, and to the fifth power. So you can think about what total power those would need to be. I think it's gonna be the LCM of two, three, and five, but we can just leave off any other prime factors if we're looking for the smallest. Now let's notice that N over two is gonna be equal to two to the A minus one times three to the B times five to the C. And so we're clearly just dividing out one power of two here. But now this being a perfect square tells us something about the parity of A minus one, B and C. So being a perfect square means that these all must be even numbers. So A minus one has to be even. But if A minus one is even, that means that A is odd and then B and C are both even. So B and C are even. Now we can go ahead and play that game with N over two and N over three. So let's do that. So we've got N over three is equal to two to the A, three to the B minus one, and then five to the C. And we want to establish that that must be a perfect cube. So that means that each of these numbers must be a multiple of three. So let's write that down. So A and C are multiples of three, and then B minus one has to be a multiple of three, but that means that B is one more than a multiple of three. So we can write B as three K plus one for some natural number K. Now let's play the game one more time. So we've got N over five is equal to two to the A, three to the B, and then five to the C minus one are multiples of five and C minus one is also a multiple of five. So in other words, we can write A, B are multiples of five and then C minus one is a multiple of five, which means C is one more than a multiple of five. We can write C as five times M plus one for some natural number M like that. Now we just start to pick off how to choose A, B, and C. So notice that A must be odd, it must be a multiple of three, and it must be a multiple of five. Well, the fact that it's a multiple of three and a multiple of five means that it's a multiple of 15, but 15 is already odd, so we can use A to be 15. So we've got A is equal to 15. Now we can play this game again. We need B to be even, in other words, a multiple of two. B also has to be a multiple of five. So that means B has to be a multiple of 10, and it has to be one more than a multiple of three. But notice that 10 is already one more than a multiple of three. So we've got B equals 10. Then finally, we can do the same thing for C. C must be even. In other words, a multiple of two it has to be a multiple of three. That means it has to be a multiple of six, but it also has to be one more than a multiple of five, but six is already one more than a multiple of five. So we have A is 15, B is 10, and C is six. So that tells us that N is equal to two to the 15 times three to the 10 times five to the six. And then you can calculate that pretty easily if you want to, maybe do so and find that in the comments. And then tell me what perfect square N over two is, what perfect cube N over three is, and one, what perfect fifth power N over five is. And that's a good place to stop.